Okay, so what is a bracha? What is it? A bracha is sometimes translated as a blessing. It's an interesting translation, and we're going to get to that soon to understand exactly what the words of the bracha mean. Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech Elam. We'll get to the translation of those words and why they're so significant. But what is a bracha in general? A bracha is the acknowledgement of Hashem. That's what it is. And it's the most essential level of bracha is acknowledgement of Hashem. That's what it is. An acknowledgement of Hashem. To acknowledge Hashem's doing something or giving something or making something. But all of that is to acknowledge. So, any bracha. Now, there are different categories of brachas. And there's different ways of dividing it. And one of the most basic ways of dividing it is into four categories. Just before I continue, it's appropriate, the Mishnah tells us that it's appropriate to say where you get your information from. So the information I'm sharing with you today mostly comes from this book called Encyclopedia Talmudit. It's literally, it's a Talmudic encyclopedia. Hmm? So it's the leader of the institution that makes this, the chief editor is Rabbi Shlomo Yosef Zevin, passed away a few years ago, but the organization is still going on. There's a whole team of scholars here, their names are listed here. If you want to see all the names, a whole list of names of people who are involved in each of these editions. They're still not they're, they're still not done the entire encyclopedia. I have my I have till about letter mem somewhere it starts from aleph, right? Like an like an encyclopedia it goes. So I have forty one books of this, and every time they come up with new ones, I I get it. So it's subjects, every single subject in the Talmud. Period. Any Jewish subject is covered there. It's an encyclopedia. Hmm? So the chief editors are by Shlomo Yosef Zevin. But look, he puts forth, there's footnotes with sources for everything he says, so if you can look, can look it up. Rabbi Shlomo Yosef Zevin is a serious scholar of major repute, and he has a whole team of scholars that work at the research and work on this and write it. And he puts in the footnote the sources, so if you don't like what he says, you can look up the sources and disagree. Anyway, it's, a, it's, a, it's an encyclopedia. Anyway, I'm just telling you where it came from. So there are four. There are different ways of, cat- of dividing the categories of brachas, and the most common way is into four different categories. One is brachas related to prayer. Number two is brachas. That's called brachas atfila, prayer uh, brachas of prayer. Number two is birchas hanehenin, which means bracha of enjoyment. What would that be? Before you eat something, you're about to enjoy something Hashem made. Make a bracha. It's one category, a bracha of enjoyment. Next category is birchas hashvach, um, blessings of of thanks. Of I'm sorry, not of thanks. Uh, blessings of thanks and praise. Let's put that into one category. Thanks and praise, and then there is also part of this category, but we can separate it, which is birches hardeia, which means blessings over things that yeah yeah, you know, we, we can put that into the category of praise. Let's keep it into just three categories. Blessings of Oh, sorry, that's the fourth category. I keep forgetting. That's part of the blessings of plays. When you see something, you see a, a rainbow, you're acknowledging and, and praising Hashem for the rainbow. Right, so let's do that again. There's blessings of prayer, right? That's in your Shemona Esri, the, the 18 brachas, blessings of prayer, blessings of hanen, of when you enjoy things, blessings of praise. So that's when you see something, you praise Hashem for its existence. Or, for example, if you go to a place, a location where a miracle happened, you praise Hashem for the miracle. And then the fourth category is, of course, it's the obvious one that I slip my mind, is the blessing over mitzvahs. Right? To make a blessing before you do a mitzvah. Yeah, before you do any mitzvah, you make a bracha. Smell. When you smell something, you make a blessing over the smell. 
right? There's also things like in the morning, the brachas you say in the morning, Praise, praise their thanks. Their blessings of enjoying. Because I enjoy the fact that I have clothing, I'm thanking Hashem for it. I enjoy the fact that I'm not in jail, I thank Hashem for it. I enjoy the fact that I'm not a slave, I thank Hashem for it. I enjoy the fact that I woke up in the morning, I thank Hashem for it. Ah, so there are some blessings that go into more than one category. They can be simultaneously a blessing of praise and also simultaneously a bless blessing of prayer. For example, and let's get right into this. The blessings of, of what's it? We said the blessings. Let's let's go into one, the this first category: blessings of prayer. Right. So we said before that every blessing is an acknowledgement, acknowledging Hashem. How is blessings of prayer acknowledgement? Because when I ask Hashem, please grant me health. What am I truly acknowledging? That my health comes from Hashem, and that's why I'm asking for it. If somebody once asked me, prayer seems to be uh, selfish. Give me, give me, give me, give me. No, it's true in one sense. But on the other hand, there's actually something beautiful about asking Hashem for things. Because it shows that you acknowledge all the things you have come from Hashem. When you're asking Hashem for help, what you're admitting, you're acknowledging that where does my health come from? From Hashem. So prayer actually, besides for asking Hashem for what you need, actually is a way of teaching you gratitude for, for, for Hashem. It is. And so the end of the day is the reason why we ask Hashem for things that are selfish is because Hashem wants us to ask. That's the best way to pray. The best way to pray is to say, I'm asking you for health because Hashem, you want me to be healthy. So you could ask him for something and like, for example, ask him for Parnassah. For what? Yes. So you're asking Hashem for Parnassah because Hashem wants you to have Parnassah. That way you can give charity, you can raise a good family. Right? It's kind of alert in Tanya that even your eating can be used for serving Hashem, right? But what I'm saying here is that the reason why the blessing is kind of an acknowledgement because when you pray and you're asking Hashem for stuff, two things are happening at once. On the one hand, you're actually just asking Hashem, please give me things. But also what you're doing is you're teaching yourself to remember, where do all my stuff come from? My health comes from Hashem, my parnasa comes from Hashem. So it's also a way of teaching yourself, right? So now let's look more at this, the blessings of prayer, right? We said before that there's, we call it Shemona Esrei, but actually there's 19 blessings, right? Read it as 19. It was called Shemona Esri because originally there was 18 blessings. But then uh, they saw that there were apostate Jews. You know what apostate Jews are? It means Jews who don't believe uh, in Judaism. And they were causing a lot of trouble for the Jews. So we, they added a 19th bracha asking Hashem, the Lamal Shinim, Alti Sikva, that these apostates, these people who are destroying Judaism, shouldn't have any success. So there's 19 blessings in. Yeah, that would be in that category. Um, and that was the 19th blessing they added to Shemona Esri. We still call it Shemona Esri, which means 18 blessings, but there's really 19. But the way the 19 brachas are divided is like this. Hmm? Isn't that like Rav? Rav is a similar thing that, that was way earlier, right? A similar kind of concept. Okay, so look at these 19 blessings. Every single nine, one of the 19, the Shemona Esri, every Amida, let's call it the Amida, it's easier. Every Amida has the same structure. The first three brachas, the first three, Maganoves, Machaya Mason, and Akela Kadesh, those three are praise. Read through it, you'll see there's no request. We don't ask Hashem for anything, we just praise Hashem. Then, the last three brachas, Maidim, Maidim, and the next one is Keladois, and then Sim Shalom. Those three are thanks. So there's three of praise in the beginning, three of thanks in the end. How many were left? Six, 19 minus 6? 13 in the middle are all requests. Follow? That's how every single, uh, every single Amida is structured. Three praise, that's how, that's how you talk to a king. First you praise the king, then you ask him for what you want, and then you say thank you. So now, what happens on Shabbat and holidays? On Shabbat and holidays, you're not allowed to ask for requests. Do you know why you're not allowed to ask for requests on Shabbat and holidays? You don't make requests of Hashem. And the reason you don't make requests for Hashem because if you make a request, it might remind you of what you're missing in life. If you're asking Hashem for Parnassah, it'll remind you on Shabbat that you're lacking Parnassah. And that will cause you distress on Shabbat or on holiday. And on Shabbat and holiday, we're not to be distressed. Shabbat and holiday, we're supposed to be disconnected from the world. Our world is perfect because we're with Hashem. 
So what do we do in the Shemona Esrei of... One second, we'll get to Yom Kippur in a minute. But why do we... So what do we do on, Sh- on Shabbat and holidays during Dam Yudah? Ah, how many blessings are there? Just seven. The six of praise, we can keep that because you can praise Hashem on Shabbat. The six, the three of... I'm sorry, the three of praise you can keep. The beginning part. The three of thanks you can also keep. Because why not? You're, thank- you're thanking Hashem. But the middle part, which is the 13 brachas of, requ- of request, asking Hashem for stuff... We don't say that because we don't request things on Shabbat and holiday. Instead, we make a blessing thanking Hashem for that holiday or for that Shabbat. And that's what the middle blessing is. Sorry? So Rosh Hashanah and Kippur are a bit different because Rosh Hashanah and Kippur are days of judgment. So they have a bit of a different feel even though it's also a holiday. And we don't have the usual requests um, that are built like, like the regular day of the week, but it's kind of different, that's true. So let's, let's look at that again then. So the brach of, again, ble- all blessings are an acknowledgement of Hashem, and this comes in the form of prayer, in first, praising. So again, you're talking about before, some are in two categories. There's an example of blessings that are in two categories. They're b- blessings of praise, just like praising Hashem for the rainbow, or praising Hashem for a miracle that happened, you're praising Hashem in those first three blessings. So it's in the prayer category and the praise category. And then the middle is 13 blessings of asking Hashem for requests. And then the last three is thanks. Now, that because the middle 13 are requests, you can actually put in your own personal request if you wanted to. So, for example, if there's someone specific you wanted to ask Hashem for healing, you can put that into your blessing of healing, of Rifa'inu. You can add the person's name. Now, if you don't know how to do it properly, better just keep it in your mind. But in theory, if someone knows how to properly incorporate Hebrew words in a proper language into the blessings, you can do it. And people do do it. Yes. So during the Amidah, you can actually put their name in if you know how to do it. But if you don't know how to, just keep them in mind. When you say Rafa'inu. Oh, in certain Sidrim, they'll tell you how to do it. Yes. That's right. So on Shabbat, you don't do that. Because on Shabbat, we don't ask for a quest. So how can we make a Mishaberach? Yes. Ah. Uh, that's a good question. And the big question is, how can we do a Misha Berach? Because Misha Berach we do on Shabbat. The Misha Berach is asking requests for health. Exactly. Now, it depends on which version of the Misha Berach you have. But in the Chabad version, if you look very carefully, it doesn't say you're asking Hashem for healing. You actually, sh- you actually say, Shabbat Himilizok. You know what that means? It's Shabbat and we don't call out to Hashem for requests. Urufu and healing, Kreiva Lavoi, is soon to come. So we actually, in the Misha Berach and Shabbat, we actually don't ask Hashem for healing. We just state a fact. Healing is going to come. Because you're not allowed to request, make requests on Shabbat. You tend to say healing is going to come. So you see healing is going to come, just as a fact. This is what the Gemara tells us to do. Ah, uh, st- because we trust in Hashem, there's our faith, right? But it's not a request. We have our faith in Hashem. Okay. So that's the category of blessings that are prayer. Right? Asking Hashem for things, praising, thank, starting, with thank, starting with praise, then request, then thanks. Shabbat and holidays, no requests, and therefore instead of the middle part, which is the request, we put in a blessing describing that holiday or describing Shabbat. All right, so you have seven blessings on, a, in on Amidah on holidays. Next category is the blessing of praise. So the blessing of play, praise, we said some of them already, which is in your, the beginning part of the Amidah where you're praising Hashem. But then there are other things. You praise Hashem when you see a beautiful landscape even. If you see, a, like for example... Today we see the ocean very often. But back in the old day, a person who saw the ocean for the first time might say a blessing, us and Masiberatius, one who makes great creations. First time seeing an ocean. It's a massive thing. And likewise with other such things, like for example, I know people who when they go to the Grand Canyon make a blessing because they see a major, beautiful creation of Hashem that they never see in their life. Or some people never see in their life. Same thing with a rainbow. rainbow or if you go to a place where there's a miracle, where a miracle happened for Jews. Hmm? Well, it's not a creation. The, the, the what? Of course it's a creation. Hashem made it. Are you talking about what we explained before? Yeah. yeah, Hashem made it within Himself, but He still made it. Right? So from our experience, it's a creation. So we're thanking Hashem for that. I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. That's a very good question. I don't know the answer. But there are things that you would see that if you saw you make a certain blessing. I'll give an example. Um, sorry? Oh, by the way, I forgot. Um, 
Thunder, Sorry? Thunder, so th uh, there's, yeah, thunder, lightning is praise, yep. right? That's praise, you're, th you're thanking Hashem for praise. But then there's also uh, blessings, of, blessings of thanks. Well, you put thanks and praise together, but blessings of thanks come, into, come in a lot of things. For example, a person who, God forbid, suffers a tragedy. So it's a bracha to acknowledge Hashem, baruch dayanem, Hashem is the true judge. Right? That's what you say when you hear that someone passed away. Something good happens to someone, baruch atoi you thank Hashem for doing good things. Right? These are all acknowledgement of praise and thanks for experiences you had. Even, for example, I don't know that people do this today, but even, for example, if someone's drinking wine and you made a guffin, and then a new bottle of wine comes out, and the new bottle of wine is way, 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 way better than the original bottle of wine he has. He makes a new blessing, Hashem who does good stuff. These are different blessings that a person does for praise and thanks. What other stuff you could say? Like other things for praise and thanks? Yeah. Um, Oh, for example, um, there's blessing made when a person goes to a cemetery for the first time in 30 days. Yeah. yeah. One who you acknowledge Hashem's true judgment. There's a blessing you make. There's a blessing you make. The blessing you actually make is a. It's a. I don't know by by heart, but uh, let's see if he has the text here in this book. Um, where is it? Okay, I don't. Uh, I don't see it here. It's probably here somewhere. But anyway, there's another other blessings of praise and thanks. For example, if something happens to you personally, right? If a person travels, a person makes a blessing when they have children and have a child. Yeah, there's a blessing someone makes to thank Hashem for see, when they see their child after being born. There's a blessing. Yeah, there's a blessing someone makes. Um, when they're saved from an accident or if they were sick and they got healed, right? Baruch HaGomel, you go to the Torah, you make HaGomel, HaGomel, or you come from overseas, right? So every experience that you have that's a good positive experience or, or God forbid a negative experience, you have to uh, praise and thank Hashem for that experience, even if it's a negative one. So I, I'm sure people make the blessing. I don't know what the answer to that question is. You have to ask, you have to ask a, a serious a rabbi for, for the specifics of what you, whether you make a blessing when you see the Niagara Falls for the first time. But it's possible that someone might make such a blessing. Or maybe make the blessing without Hashem's name, just in case it's not did actually you, legit. Did I did. I made the blessing without Hashem's name. Okay, I'm trying to find the blessing that you make when you go to a cemetery. Hmm... Here, Baruch Baruch Hashem Yotzer Eschem Bedin, the Zon Eschem Bedin, the Kilkel Eschem Bedin. You're acknowledging Hashem's true judgment in in that these people passed away when they're supposed to. Okay, there's even a creation. There's even blessing when a person says if he sees a kind of person that he never saw before, like a unique version of pers of people. Even that. There's there's really all kinds of blessings for everything that a person experiences. Okay, so that's the category of we cover the category of prayer of blessings for prayer. We cover the category of blessings for praise and thanks for all kinds of experiences, whether they're good or bad. And the next category of blessing is the blessing of enjoyment. Now, before we get to the blessing you make before you enjoy something, before you eat food, there's the after bracha. Right? That's it's part of the same category because you're thanking Hashem for enjoying food. But the bracha, the bracha that comes after your food is actually the only Biblical commandment, the only biblical bracha. The only bracha that's daraita, according to everybody, is birch tamazon. According to some opinions, even the bracha you make in the morning to thank Hashem for the Torah, oh, yeah. right? Which is really a bracha for a mitzvah. But right? That's birch ta mitzvah. So the other category is bracha on mitzvahs. So really the bracha for Torah is really a bracha for mitzvah, for the mitzvah of Torah. There are some that say that that mitzvah is, bi that, that bracha is biblical. But for sure, according to all opinions, birch tamazon is biblical, right? The Pasuk says, vachalta. You eat, you'll be satisfied, you make a blessing. Right? One second before I forget that. So when it comes to Birchat Hanen, when it comes to the bracha of thanking Hashem for enjoying food, we start with the bracha that comes after you eat, because that is a bracha that's biblical, it's Daraita. And there are four brachas. And three came, three brachas were written 
the same time that all other brachas were written, which is by Ezra and the Anshik Knesset Agdala. People were making blessings before, but the text of the bracha came then. The same thing as prayer. Pray, sorry? It's, be, it's just before the second bit of Mikdash, or around that time. So one second. Uh, people were making brachas before, and the same way people, people were praying before. Hashem said to pray, so people prayed. But they didn't have a fixed language. People prayed in the language they wanted to. But over time, people got, didn't get so good at Hebrew. People didn't know how to do it. So in Shekinesh Sagdola, and Ezra decided to write down the words that you're supposed to say that it matches the proper obligation. And they also wrote the brachas down, and they also wrote the first three brachas of the Berch Tamazon. The fourth bracha of Tamazon was added later after a certain miracle had happened in Betar. Two miracles. No, no Betar? Yeah, go to your question. I'll get to this. So you just said the, the, the added the bracha to the Torah. So it's not biblical. The, no, no, no. The, the bracha of the Torah, according to some opinions, is biblical. It is, according, if according to some opinions, how... Okay, so let me explain this. When you have a biblical... So let's give an example. Let's just use prayer as an example. Hashem says to pray. That's a biblical commandment. But what do you do when you pray? You praise Hashem, ask for what you need, and thank Him. So how do you do that? No, there is a commandment to pray. Sure. Because the part, the, the Gemara learns this in Tainus, the Gemara, uh, I think in Tainus, maybe it's in Brachas, that, uh, okay, I don't know where it is, don't quote me on that, but it's the beginning of Masechta, I'm pretty sure it's Tainus, where there it says, maybe it's the beginning of, I'm not sure if it's the beginning of Brachas, the beginning of Tainus. Anyway, the Gemara says that the, the Pasuk says, Pavata b'shem alakechem b'chol levavchem, you should serve Hashem with your heart, it's the heart, it's the beginning of Brachas, and Ezo hu avodeshabalev, what constitutes serving Hashem with your heart? Zut filo, this is prayer. So it's a commandment in the Torah to pray. But what's the commandment? The commandment is, there's different opinions of what the commandment is, but basically the commandment is, we'll go with the Rambam's opinion that it's a commandment to pray every day. And the commandment basically is to first praise Hashem, then ask Hashem for what you need, and then thank Hashem. But what words do you have to do to, to use to do that? From biblically speaking, I don't know, use your own words. And that's what people did. Until the Chachamim put a text to the tefillah, that's what people were doing. Every morning they would thank Hashem, they would praise Hashem, ask Hashem for what they need, and then thank Him, using their own words. But then the problem is, people start to not understand halacha, start to not understand what words you're allowed to say to Hashem, what words you're not allowed to say to Hashem. People weren't so comfortable and fluent in Lashon HaKadosh. That's when Ashkenaz Sagdal decided, let's write down the words. So it's not as if they invented prayer. Prayer existed before, they just put the words to it. You follow? And the same thing would be true of Birch HaTatara. There's a mitzvah to thank Hashem for the mitzvah for Torah before you learned. Well, the but the words were put by the Anshik Nesek Dola. Punishment? What punishment? Yeah. The Jews recently, just, just recently, the Jews, they didn't, they skipped the bracha of, uh, they skipped the bracha of, uh, Torah? Yeah, Torah. And that caused the bit to be destroyed. That's a good question. I'll get to that in a second. I just want to finish answering this question. That's a good question. I'm going to get to that in a moment. So, we're kind of going on a little tangent, but this is important. So, the, again, the Anshik Nesek Dola, they're the ones that instituted the blessings before, all the blessings bef- that we talked about. The blessings before you eat, the blessings before you do a mitzvah, the blessings of praise, all that came from the Anshik Nesek Dola and Ezra. They also made the text for the first three brachas of Berchet Amazon, of, of the bracha you do after you eat, even though the bracha after you eat is a biblical commandment and therefore came before, but the text of it came from Anshik Nesak following, and then the fourth bracha came a little later. The fourth bracha came, the fourth, okay, so there's four brachas in, in, uh, in, in uh, Berchet Amazon, right? There's, there is um, Hazan HaSakal, and then there is Noid Lacha, right? And then there is Uvenei Yerushalayim, Right, Rachim don't have an age line. And the next one is Baruch Tashem Lokeim Alon HaToiva Metiv. Right, that's the fourth blessing. So that fourth bracha came later, after the destruction of the second Beit HaMikdash. The Romans, maybe it was during that period, maybe before the destruction, maybe after the destruction, I don't remember exactly. But during that period, which is a few hundred years after Anshik, Nesek, and Ezra, during that period, the Jews, uh, there, were, there was a city called Betar, which had millions and millions of Jews living there, with tons of yeshivot. It was a big, strong Jewish community. And a whole long story, bottom line is, the Romans massacred, genocide, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Jews, just in the city of Betar. And what they did was, they, um, 
they took these dead bodies and put them on the highway as a that's right as a warning don't mess now on the 15th of Av which is actually coming up tomorrow right today's the 14th so tomorrow's the 15th of Av I think today's the 14th tonight. tonight and tomorrow yeah on the 15th of Av the decree changed after there was a new uh, Roman person they were out they were allowed to take them down and bury them and there were two miracles first of all the fact that they were able to bury them is a miracle and number two the other miracle was that the bodies never rotted or start to stink for all those years that it was up there so even it's a funny thing even though it was a warning it's supposed to be a warning don't mess with the Romans or this is going to happen to you it was also a display of Hashem's miracle for Jews because it didn't the body didn't decay well they kicked the Jews out of Israel I don't, I don't know who took, who took over the Romans in Israel the, the Turks no, the Crusaders maybe I don't know I don't even know I don't know I guess it fell apart when Rome fell apart I really don't know the history of it I'm sorry but and that's why they made so that after that miracle they made the bracha of Hatoi Vametiv that's why it's, it's a double expression Hatoi Vametiv he's good and does good because it was a double miracle I don't know that. I don't know okay so now I want to answer your question the bircha Tatara okay you know we'll answer that question when we get to the bracha of, uh, of for mitzvahs let's continue with the bracha of thanking Hashem for food so that's the after blessing that's bir- that's uh, Birchat Hamazon that comes after and that's biblical again except for the fourth bracha that was added later then there's the bracha before you enjoy anything the, the, our sages tell us that anyone who eats food without first thanking Hashem for the food the Gemara says a few things one of the things it says is, is if he's stealing this is all Hashem's world everything is Hashem's world and you're not acknowledging that it came from Hashem you're not thanking Hashem you're not asking permission this is like you're stealing Hmm? That's earlier. Wait, so what happens to those bodies? Like before the rope? One second, we're still stuck in the story. Are, are the graves still there? I don't know where the graves are. No idea. So, like, for example, if you step in Israel, you might be stepping on the grave? Many places in Israel, you're probably stepping, stepping on graves, yeah. Because of the history of wars and things that happened there. Yeah. Anyway, so where we are is. Where were we? Where were we? Okay, the blessings, be, the brachas you make before you eat. Right? Again, the Gemara says that anybody who eats something. Or in joys of this world without first thanking Hashem it's as if he's stealing because Hashem's world and here taking something without thanking Hashem for it right so it's as if you're stealing and this makes brachas very important now let me ask you something if it's so important to make a bracha before you eat how come it's not a biblical commandment why is it only from the sages hmm? if making a blessing before you eat is so important how come it's only from the sages? Why is it not from the biblical, from the Torah? Why didn't Hashem himself say, make a blessing before you eat, before you enjoy the world? Testing us, kind of, but kind of, but just explain that a little bit. What that means really is, how do you, how do you thank somebody? If you have to command someone to thank, then it's not real thanks. Real thanks is when you actually acknowledge it. So actually, the whole point of the blessing is that it comes from Jews. Sorry? Yeah, he wanted to see. Are you guys going to pick up on this idea that I want you to thank us? And we did. And that explains why you don't just say, thank you, Hashem, for making everything. For you, when you're eating a fruit, you say, thank you, Hashem, for, for Priya eights, for fruit. Eating a vegetable, thank you. For a vegetable, mezanot, shakal, each category, different kind of blessing. Why? Because how do you properly thank somebody? Somebody can't. Hmm? If they don't know, there's different laws. But why, how do you truly thank somebody? You want to thank your mom for dinner. One way you can do it is thank you. Okay? Or you can say, thank you, I really liked how you made that sauce. Now that's a much more appreciative thank you. So when you acknowledge the details of what Hashem made, then that's true thanks. So the, the, the sages could have said, wake up in the morning and say, thank you Hashem for everything. But that's a cheap thank you. A real thank you. Thank you Hashem for my, my belt. Thank you Hashem for my kippah. Thank you Hashem for, for my clothing. And thank you Hashem for the apple and the orange and, and all details. And that's why it's so important to, to know and remember the details of what we're thanking Hashem for because that shows your gratitude and appreciation on a much deeper level. Understand? Yeah. Okay. So you want to ask something? So if someone doesn't know what the blessing is, if it's a question of a fruit or vegetable, you make bari piyadama. If it's not either of those, you make a shahakal. If let's say I don't have my, if I let's say I don't have my tefillin, no, I don't have my book. Let's say I don't have anything in the middle. I didn't bring whatever. It's ever happened to you, brother? So there's brachas you should know by heart. I never had a chas v'shalom mis the day of tefillin. Baruch Hashem. Hmm? Let's say I don't know the brachas by heart. Can I say for for shachalim? I know I'm going to do my tefillin after. Can I do like a prayer? 
Well, yeah, you can do a prayer, but you, if, yeah, you can do prayer in English, but it's best to, to get the text because you don't want to say the wrong thing. Or, or that's one of the things. There's, there's a line which is kolam and shanam and bet chachamim. You cannot change from the text that chachamim gave because it's a big, big uh, problem. So you put on the tefillin and you say shema. Yeah. You say thank you Hashem for the tefillin. Baruch Atah Hashem Alakin Malacha El Mashak Kishanu Tzitzit Tzivon Wal Mitzvah Tefillin or La Lanier Tefillin Two Brachas, right? And the Shema. That's the basic. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, let's move forward because running we're running out of time. Um, so that was that's the blessing for thanks uh, for for enjoyment for Hanenin. So we covered blessings of prayer, right? We covered blessings for praise and thanks. When a person experiences and thinks, sees things from Hashem, they thank Hashem, whether they're good or bad things, we thank Hashem for them, acknowledge, praise. And then we did blessings for enjoying our world. There's the biblical Berchat Amazon, actually, according to some opinions, even the Alamichya, you know, the Me'en Shalosh, the smaller Bracha, is also biblical, according to some opinions. And then we talk about the rabbinic uh, mitzvah, which is to make a blessing before you enjoy anything, and that's our way of showing our appreciation for Hashem, our gratitude to Hashem for everything we have in our, work, in our life. Finally, the last category is the bracha for mitzvahs. And the bracha for mitzvahs is a similar thing. Not just to do the mitzvah. Hashem said to do the mitzvah. And the Chacham say, come and say, before you do a mitzvah, thank Hashem for the opportunity to do a mitzvah. And every single mitzvah has a bracha you do before, except for one mitzvah. There's one mitzvah that you know how to have a bracha before you do. You know which one that is? Shabbat. Shabbat, make a bracha, you make kiddush. There's one mitzvah that you do not make a bracha on. Only one. The mitzvah of tzedakah. And the reason is because somebody else is relying on them, on you. What are you going to do? Wait and get all holy and thank Hashem before the other guy gets, gets what he needs? Somebody else is relying on you? Give right away. Don't, don't start getting holy. Is it better to donate to MTC or to, a, to an old The laws of charity are long and complex of where you have to give and where you should be giving and what's the priority? Not for now. But it really, there really is a list of laws about that, really. It truly is a list of laws. Okay, so that's the blessing of mitzvahs. Now, I want to conclude with the translation of the bracha. So every single bracha opens up with these words. Baruch atah Hashem, elakeinu melech ha'olam. So let's translate it very quickly. Baruch means what? Blessed. Blessed are you, God our Lord, King of the universe. Let's go through each word. Blessed are you. What does that mean, blessed are you? We are blessing Hashem. I thought Hashem blesses us. Okay, so one thing is, we're not telling him that we are blessing him, but we're actually describing him. He is blessed. That's one way of understanding the word Baruch. Blessed are you. Exactly. You are blessed. Not that I'm actually blessing you. Right? No, blessed are you. That means you are blessed. No? Right, not that I'm blessing you. No, it's, I'm not giving God a bracha. So I'm describing him as a, it's a compliment. Exactly. That's one way of thinking about the word Baruch. Another way is, listen to this, this is very interesting. The word Bracha, comes from the word, or Baruch, comes from the word, be, the root word is, the Shoresh is Bez Resh Chaf. That same root has other meanings also. For example, a knee, a knee, like on my foot, in Hebrew is called a Berech. A water, a pool of water is called Brecha. A Brecha is a pool of water. Right? Another translation is Lehavrich. That means, when you take a vine, a vine, that's growing in a vineyard, and you want it to grow more, you bend it down into the earth so it keeps on growing. And it keeps on growing. That's called lahavrich. So you have four translations come from the same root word. Blessing, um, uh, a, a knee, pool of water, and this vineyard thing that you're putting back into the ground. What do they all four have in common? That they all come from up to down. The, the vine, you're taking it, putting it into the ground. A knee helps you bend down. A pool of water always looks to the lowest location. So what does that mean for the translation of the words, Baruch Atah Hashem? I'm bringing you, your blessing down to this world. Ah, so Bracha is not, Baruch is not just that I am describing Hashem as blessed, I'm complimenting Him. But I'm actually, Baruch Atah Hashem, I'm saying I want your blessings to come down into this world. Your light and your life should come down into the world. Bring it into our experience. What am I asking to come down? Ata you. What do we mean when we say you? You, the word you, is the deepest way you can refer to somebody. I'll tell you a story that makes this point. There was once a scholar, a sage, 
His name was Rabbi Zaman of Liadi, the author of the Tanya, actually, that we were learning earlier, Rabbi the Alter Rebbe. And he had a grandson who also became a Rebbe later. His name was, he was called the Tzemach Tzedek. His name was Menachem Mendel, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Shneerson. The Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Shneerson, is named after the Tzemach Tzedek. This Tzemach Tzedek is a grandson of the Alter Rebbe, the author of Tanya. So the Alter Rebbe turns to his grandson, who's only two or three years old, and says, calls him by his first name, Mendel. Menachem, I how he called him. Said, where is Zayda? Zayda means grandpa, right? Where's grandpa? So the kid says, points, there's grandpa. And the Alter Rebbe says, no, that's grandpa's beard. So then he points again. And he says, no, that's grandpa's nose. And he points again, no, that's grandpa's cheeks. So the, the child gives up and starts playing with toys. And then the child turns around and screams, Zayda! And when he does that, we're like, you know, grandpa! When he does that, the Alter Rebbe turns to him, and the child said, ah, that was Zayda. Right? You understand what that means? What he's telling you is, I'm not talking something about you. I'm getting your attention. Not just your beard, or your eyes, or your nose. I'm getting your attention. And that's what you mean when you say the word you. When I say a name, I'm describing you in some way. When I say you, I mean you. Which is why when teachers want to make a point, you get right here, right? They use the word you. Because the word you talks right to the person. So when I say, Baruch Ata, blessed, blessed are you, I'm talking directly to Hashem, you. It's the most intimate and deepest way you can talk to Hashem is using this word, Ata, you. What's the next word we say? Hashem, God. What does God mean? He's God of the whole world. What does our Lord mean? Elokeinu? Ah, He's my God. He's my personal Lord. I'm answerable to Him. So blessed are you, Hashem, talking directly to him. And then we say, Hashem, you are God of everything, but you're Elokeinu, you're our God. You're my personal God that I respond to. Melech Olam, king of the universe, and because you're the king of the universe, you made this apple, so thank you. Or you made this vegetable, so thank you. Following? That's the translation of the word, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu, Melech Olam. And then I want to conclude finally with the rest of the blessing for mitzvahs. With mitzvahs, we have the same opening. Blessed are you, God, my Lord, our Lord, King of the universe. I share that. Kiddishanu made us holy. Bim mitzvahs of with his commandments. Vitzivanu, when he commanded us to put on tefillin. Or commanded us to keep Shabbat or whatever, or, or whatever the mitzvah is we're doing, right? Yeah. So now let's think about this before, before we get the question. Kiddishanu bim mitzvahs of. He made us holy with his commandments. First of all, what does the word holy mean? What does the word kedusha mean? You know when else you would use the word kedusha? When someone's getting married. You know what the Khatan says to the Kala when he gives the ring? He says, at li. You are now kadosh to me. The, the husband makes the woman holy. So what does it mean kadosh? Kadosh. The word kadosh means exclusive. Sacred. And what the husband's saying is, you are now exclusively mine. We are exclusively for each other. That's what the marriage is. We're exclusive and nobody else is allowed here. It's just our marriage. So what are we saying, Asher Kedishana, you made us kadosh with your mitzvahs? We are exclusively yours. You singled us out. That's what we're telling Hashem. You singled us out to make us uniquely and exclusively yours. That's what we mean when we say Kedishana. How? With what? With what did He make us exclusively His? The mitzvahs of with his commandments. These commandments is like the ring that the Chatan is giving the Kala and says, you're exclusively mine. So the mitzvah is like the ring that Hashem gives us and says, you're now exclusively mine when you do this. You become, you and me become one. We're, we're with each other here. But now let's look at the word even deeper. Mitzvah tav, his mitzvahs. That means every mitzvah we do is really his because he does them also. The mitzvahs we do, Hashem also does in a spiritual way. The Gemara tells us about tefillin, for example. Our tefillin, we describe a praise of Hashem. Hashem also has spiritual tefillin. And you know what it says in His spiritual tefillin? Praise of us. So every mitzvah that we do is mitzvah Yisav, is His mitzvah. They're His, the things that Hashem does in a spiritual way, but He does them. And that's how He makes us kadosh, that's how He makes us exclusively His. Isn't that a beautiful way to start doing a mitzvah? Before you do any mitzvah, you think, blessed are you, ata you, directly to you I'm talking. Hashem, you're the God of everything. Elekeinu, you're my personal God. 
Melech Olam, your king of the world, and Asher Kedishonu B'mitzvoisov, you made us exclusively yours by giving us this commandment, and this commandment really is your commandment. And when I do it, you and I are going to become one. Thinking like that before you do any mitzvah changes the whole dynamic of how you do the mitzvah. That's the blessing that we say before the mitzvah. Okay, so before I answer your question about the mitzvah for studying Torah and why it's so important, I want to answer your, uh, ask your question. Yeah, so when you say you love Hashem, you're not talking about how powerful Hashem is, you're yeah. talking about how you feel about Him. I know, but right? not, we, you can't feel how, how powerful Right, that's true. So that's an interesting point. No, what you're saying is that your love doesn't really get to the truth of Hashem. Right, because your love is like just your love. It's not telling you how powerful He is, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but like, it's also, uh, I, it's like how, how, you saying that you love, uh, that He's powerful, He's going to make you love Him. Oh, that, oh, yes, that's true. In order to love Hashem, you have to get to know Hashem. That's something we're learning about in Tanya, right? I, mean, I know, but like, you say that he's powerful, it doesn't mean like, like... Right, saying that Hashem is powerful doesn't automatically make you love him, that's true. But if you understand what his power is, and you understand how much Hashem invested in you, you understand what Hashem is all about, then maybe you would start to love him. And that's the challenge of Tanya, which we learned about earlier, right? But I thought you were asking something else, which is, you know, as great as my love is, it doesn't really get to really what Hashem is, it's just how I feel. Do you know how you really get to Hashem? In a mitzvah. Because he made us kadosh. That's like that ring. He made us exclusively his in those mitzvahs. So that's true. The act of the mitzvah connects us deeper to Hashem than the greatest love we can possibly feel. Right? Okay, now I want to answer your question. You're quoting, you're referring to the Gemara, which tells us that one of the reasons why the temple was destroyed is because al shalai baruchu ba Torah because they did not make the blessing of the Torah before they studied Torah. Which means they studied Torah, but they didn't make the blessing. Right? And the question is why? Why They were studying Torah, so they didn't make a blessing. What's the big deal? So there's a famous Bach, the Bayus Chadosh. It's a commentary on the Tor. The Tor is written by Rabbi Yaakov ben Asher, and he is a codifier. He put together Jewish law. And one of the commentaries on the Tor is the Bach. Beis Ches, which stands for Bayus Chadosh. Now he writes like this. He explains like this. A person can study Torah because Torah is very intellectually stimulating. It's lots of fun. And it's very enjoyable to study Torah. But a person who does that is missing the most important part of Torah. What's the most important part of Torah? Hashem. That it's Hashem's Torah. The important part is not how... Of course it's important that you understand it very well. But much more important than that is you realize and sense that this is not just another nice idea, but this is God's idea. This is Hashem's Torah. And it's exactly the point of a bracha. We just finished explaining what's the point of a bracha. Acknowledging Hashem. So when you make a bracha on the Torah, what are you acknowledging? That Hashem is the giver of the Torah. So the Jews then, who studied Torah but didn't make the blessing, what that really means is, they enjoy Torah because it's a good, fun, mental exercise. But they forgot the main point, that this is Hashem's Torah. And that's why it's so important to make the blessing of the Torah. Understand? This explains, for example, the Gemara which says in Yuma, that someone who is Zohar, someone who merits Torah becomes a portion, a potion of life. Sam hachayim. Someone who doesn't merit. Nasa sam hamavis. Torah becomes a potion of death. How could Torah become a potion of death? Even if the person doesn't merit. Now you understand the answer. If I understand that Torah is from Hashem, then every time I learn Torah, I become more humble and more connected to Hashem. But if I forget that the Torah is Hashem's Torah, what happens when I study? It makes me more egotistical. And that is disconnect from Hashem. That's like death. Because it's disconnect from Hashem. It's all about ego. So it's very important to be conscious and aware of the blessing of Torah. That this is Hashem's Torah. Following? One more last comment on the blessing of Torah. Which is, we say, Baruch HaTah Hashem, Noten HaTorah. Translate the word Noisen HaTorah. No. Gives. Noisen means gives in the present tense. Blessed are you, give the Torah. What are we saying? It's not just Hashem gave the Torah 3,000 years ago and now I'm learning it. That would be very nice. But even more important than that, Hashem is giving me the Torah now. As I learn it, Hashem is sitting with me and giving me that Torah right here, right now. Imagine learning Torah with that in mind. Now that would be a real change in experience. So I hope you get a pre an appreciation in a sense for why it's so important to have these brachas and why it's so part of our day. It's literally everything we do is a bracha. That's the point. You have to constantly be reminded 
And remember that everything we have is thanks to Hashem. This is Hashem's apple that I have the merit to eat. And this is God's Torah that I have been, that I have the merit to learn. And this is God's mitzvah through which I have the merit to become one with Hashem, Kadosh to be sanctified and exclusively Hashem's. Mm -hmm. All right? Have a wonderful day.